As AOC sold out, once known for her outspokenness and being not afraid to take on the Democratic establishment, the 34-year-old New York Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez appears to have fallen in line. The three-term Congresswoman has donated for the first since being elected to the campaign arm of the House Party, the Democratic Congressional Campaign Committee. First reported by the New York Times, AOC contributed $26,000 to the party's war chest in an effort to help prevent Republicans from staying in power. New York Spectrum News caught up with her outside the Capitol this week. Let's listen to what she had to say. First and foremost, if Democrats do not retake the House in November, I do not have confidence that a Republican majority would certify the results of a presidential election. Um, the, fa the threat of fascism is very real and very serious, and it's probably at its most serious than we've seen. So, has a once boisterous AOC really sold out, or is she making a legitimate practical political consideration given the risks of Republican rule? Now, here to get to the bottom of the many phases of AOC is Sabrina Salvati, host of the Savvy Sabs podcast. Welcome back, Savvy. Good morning. Thanks so much for having me on. Yeah, it's always a pleasure. Look, Sabi, this pro clip, as you probably are aware, provoked a whole range of replies from across the broad left and independent media spheres and beyond. So some leftists called her a sellout, asking why any leftist or progressive who gave her grassroots donations would ever donate to her again when the money's gonna end up in the hands of the corporate Democratic Party. Then you had pro-Biden defenders like uh, Olivia Giuliana just defending her against randos on the internet, defending uh, Biden at all costs and the Democratic Party at all costs at all times. You had some leftists like Kate Willett acknowledge that, hey, it might be bad actually if Republicans did refuse to certify the election. And I don't love this, but maybe this is what needs to be done. And even Jesse Single, who's mostly known for his reporting on trans issues, weighed in saying, quote, I'm all for criticizing lefty hyperbole, but how is this hyperbole? You literally can't remain in good stead in the mainstream Republican Party unless you pretend Donald Trump won the last election. Does he have a point? Does AOC have a point that there are real risks to democracy here that are worth her giving this money over to the Democrats? I think that AOC is playing a political game, and I, I want to break that down. Uh, she didn't have to be the one to donate that money to the DCCC. That money could have come from any member of Congress. Uh, she did this to secure her political career within the Democratic Party. That is what I firmly believe. This is something that she said that she would not do. But the political game that she plays is that she appears to be uh, just progressive enough. She'll do, she'll do certain things to appear to be just progressive enough to still maintain some of her progressive base uh, and some of the support that she had from the grassroots base, but then she'll also uh, support the corporate wing of the Democratic Party so that she can solidify her political career within the party, and I want to break that down. Some of the ways that she supported some of the progressive actions is she's against uh, APAC. So she's a part of this coalition to reject APAC. But people have to remember that affects her directly because APAC has put up a lot of money against her and other members of the squad to get them out of Congress. So there's that piece. Uh, she has called them out, which I support. I think APAC should register as a foreign agent. I'm not in support of APAC either. But she's called out Republican donors that are attached to APAC and Republican uh, party members that are attached to APAC. But she hasn't called out people like Hakeem Jeffries that very much takes a lot of money from APAC or people like Richie Torres. I believe Ilhan Omar has called out Richie Torres, AOC not so much. So she's not willing again to call out the establishment members of the Democratic Party because she wants to continue to have a political career. She is finally uh, calling uh, Israel's assault uh, on Gaza a, a genocide after being pushed to do so by protesters. Uh, so there's that. However, this is where she still supports the corporate wing of the Democratic Party. Although she did that, she's calling Gaza genocide. She has endorsed Joe Biden, who is complicit with the genocide in Gaza. If AOC cared so passionately about helping the Palestinian people, why doesn't AOC advocate for supporting a third party or independent candidate that is against the genocide and that is for self-determination of the Palestinian people? She could rally her base immediately by telling people we all need to get behind Jill Stein. And I say Jill Stein because she has the most ballot access, Just reality.
she could rally a lot of people around that. And we could actually have a huge third party movement in this country. But she doesn't want that to happen. She's going along with dim leadership. She voted against the railroad workers strike. See, people forget this. This was her turning against labor. She voted for funding for the war in Ukraine. Uh, she removed abolished ICE off of her website. That was one of the big things that she ran on. And a lot of people forget this as well. She supported regime change in Venezuela. This is not something a leftist or a progressive should support uh, regime changes abroad. And I don't remember the last time I heard AOC talk about Medicare for all either. That's another thing. So she's doing just enough to continue to say that she's still progressive and try to hold on to some of that progressive base. But when you look at the way that AOC is voting, she's still very much in line with the corporate wing of the Democratic Party. And I believe that's to further her political career. She says that the reason she's doing this now is that the leadership of the Democratic Party, leadership in the House, has changed significantly enough. Obviously, it's changed in terms of having different people involved. Nancy Pelosi is no longer um, the leader of the congressional faction. Uh, but is that a fair argument that there are, you know, these actually real differences between Nancy Pelosi and Hakeem Jeffries, between Steny Hoyer and so on? I don't think they're really that different. Hakeem Jeffries is just as corporate as Nancy Pelosi was. He's speaking at APAC conventions just like Nancy Pelosi uh, did. Uh, he doesn't support Medicare for all either. I think these people are very much aligned when it comes to corporate money, Wall Street interests, and the military industrial complex. So I think we have to always boil it down to those three things if you're a leftist or a progressive. I mean, it is curious to make an argument that Hakeem Jeffries would somehow be preferable when, unlike Nancy Pelosi, he really was the face of the um, blacklisting of uh, the companies that worked for progressive candidates, uh, the, uh, the the APAC drives, as you have been mentioning, uh, the attacks on um, uh, progressive pro-Palestine candidates like Nina Turner, to make the case that AOC is somehow going to acquiesce because Hakeem Jeffries is now in charge really does give the game away. But it's also curious because, as you say, uh, Sabi, it's not necessary that AOC would have given uh, needed to give her money to the DNC for them to resist, as it were. So it really does seem like a, a, a forcing of a sort of a kissing of the ring. They don't need her money, but it does seem like she's being perhaps coerced or willingly willing to make that trade in order for a political returns down the line. What do you think her long-term political goals are? I believe at some, at some point, uh, I believe that she's gonna run for a Senate. And then I believe from there, at some point, she'll probably run for president of the United States. People need to really ask where this money is going. Uh, Richie Torres is up for re-election this year. I know he does have an independent uh, challenger. Jose Vega is challenging him uh, as an independent run, uh, especially challenging him on respect to uh, foreign policy and his, uh, I guess, dis disrespect for people uh, in the Bronx. But where is that money going that's going into the Dipple, the, the D triple C? Uh, is some of that money gonna go towards candidates like Richie Torres, who is running for re-election, who's out here campaigning heavily for support for Israel. Meanwhile, he does nothing for his constituency in the Bronx. People need to ask those questions. And I think when people start asking those questions and they follow the money trail, I think more people will push back against AOC. I don't know what else AOC needs to do to wake people up and make them realize that her path is the same path as Nancy Pelosi, but to go a further, a little bit further beyond and eventually run for president. And I called this a couple years ago, she is basically trying to become the new Nancy Pelosi. And I think she's following in her footsteps. Mm, Sabi Sabs, thanks as always for joining us today. Thank you so much.